Okay, so we're going to start off looking at uh, the grab bag. It's for want of a better explanation. It's just, this is just a canvas bag uh, filled with beans. Okay, so mung beans or haricot beans, uh, red beans, anything like that is fine. Okay, it's just like a fine dried bean. Uh, you could even use dried peas. Anything like that is fine, or even gravel if you wanted to use gravel. All right, obviously, uh, if you use gravel, it'll probably wear through the bag a little bit faster. Um, this one's done and sewn up at one side. Uh, easy way to make your own. You could use, uh, like I say, a canvas bag, uh, these cash bags that some banks have. Uh, you could even use a pillow, okay? Get a pillow, fold it over, tie a knot in the end, and you can do the same, all right, with the, with the gravel or whatever you're using inside. So this one, like I say, what we're going to look at is it probably weighs maybe around about two kilos, so it's not too heavy. This one's looking at developing the finger strength. Okay, and we're looking at, it's, it's grabbing, it's a simple exercise. All of these things for conditioning are simple. There's nothing difficult about it, all right? They're all simple exercises, a bit painful because you're looking at developing, like I say, that conditioning, but... Uh, by doing that, you'll be better uh, for it in an attacky situation. When somebody comes and strikes you and you hit them, yeah, they're going to be thinking it's the wrong, the wrong person to fight with. So let's have a look at this grab bag. So we're going to start off just grabbing, and you're grabbing with the fingertips. You're not grabbing uh, at sort of full hand, as it were. You want to, you want to basically be uh, grabbing with the fingertips. We'll start from this way, and basically you, you, you're throwing it and catching it. So from here, here. And as you do it, as you're striking, you're trying to grab, obviously, a good handful of the beans, but clawing in with the fingertips. So you're curling the fingers over and squeezing in. So you're not just literally just grabbing it lightly just to hold it. You want to be squeezing in with the fingers themselves. You'll see that develop more when we start working on the sandbag for the iron palm and also some of the other exercises that we're going to do. Like I say, it's a simple exercise. There's nothing complicated. One thing you need to do is look at that structure, looking back at the previous discs when you're talking about keeping the elbows tucked in. So I don't want you to grab in the bag with your elbows out here like this, okay, because you're training bad structure. You need to keep your elbows tucked in, all right, so you develop that power and get into the habit of having your arms tucked in. So again, from here, grab, one, two. Don't hold your breath. From here, grab, forward, and grab forcefully. So you're striking in and grabbing, here. And you're probably gonna be looking at doing that for a roundabout, you know, you could do it for a length of time or a number of repetitions, it doesn't matter. So you could say do that a hundred times, all right, or two minutes, all right, because if you look at on average one every second, two minutes is going to give you enough time to do a hundred repetitions. Really simple exercise, okay, uh, doesn't take a lot of training, okay, but it's a good place to start. All the other condition exercises that we do, like I say, We'll either work the finger strength, work in the ligaments and tendons. We'll work on actually striking the hands or striking the forearms to develop that power and develop that conditioning. All right, so that, uh, like I say, your bone density becomes stronger. So when you hit or you block or you deflect, you're not going to damage your own bone. All right. Plus, it's very good for your health as well because you improve circulation. All right. So very simple exercise with the, sat with the, uh, the grab bag. We're going to move on to the next exercise. Okay, the next exercise that you're going to look at is, again, to develop the grip, to develop the forearms. Because, because of course, when you're grabbing anything, you're working all the sort of flexors and extensors in the forearm. So you grab, squeeze, so that when you're grabbing somebody, it's not just like a superficial grab. You're grabbing and it hurts. Okay, so you need to develop that grip strength to help those arms of Shaolin. This one, very, very simple. Just a bar or a piece of wood. This is a metal bar, but it could be anything, okay? Um, this is uh, a weight, five pound weight, okay, so 2.3 kilos in weight, string or rope between the two, and just fast, so tie that onto the weight. Again, it could be anything. You could use um, an oil, oil can or oil drum, okay, filled it with water or sand, and likewise use that, just tie it around the handle. Anything that's got some weight to it, you're looking at, and you can gradually increase the weight as well that you want to do. Tie it to this, fix it to a bar, and from here, like I say, just, we just taped it around, tied it around and taped it around the middle bar here. And what you're looking at doing is keeping your elbows tucked in. So not necessarily out here. You could do it straight arm if you wanted. But elbows tucked in and you're just rolling back. Full movements with the wrist to really work that forearm from here. And again, working a length of time. So you roll it one way, 
this way, all the way up, and then roll it out again this way. Keeping the elbows tucked in. Once it's gone to here, you then go the opposite way and continue the forward movement. So it's quite tough on the forearms, quite tough on the shoulders, but it's developing that strength to here and then back again. And you want to do, like I say, maybe a minute to two minutes will give you the training that you need. And like I say, you're developing strengthening the forearms. Because in the previous disc, we've talked about the Q-Sau, or the bridge hands. And the Q-Sau is key, okay, to the, uh, the Hungar system, which is the martial, what was used, the martial militia, okay, over in China and Hong Kong back in the day. So it's all about this. Remember, your Q-Sau is your bridge hand. It's your elbow to your forearm, to the wrist. And that's what we're looking at training. Okay, so that after one or two minutes of doing that, you should really, really feel your forearm, okay? Remember, when you're doing it, you also need to have correct posture. Again, we're talking about posture and position. Not only do we keep the elbows in, rather than elbows floating out this way, okay? You keep your body upright. So you don't want to be leaning forward, you don't want to be leaning back. Body upright, head upright, elbows tucked in. And then again from here, rolling up, full movements with the wrist. So you really want to work that wrist. Keeping the elbows tucked in, and then the opposite way. And by doing this, like I say, controlling the breathing, you should really, really work those forearms and develop excellent forearm strength. Key again, you're grabbing full palm on this one, turning. So full rotation, so you're looking at full movement, full turn of your wrist, or full turn of your wrist back. Don't just do a little movement, you want the full, full movement this way. Again, even after a few minutes, you'll feel it. And it's something you want to do daily, all right? The conditioning, ideally do it daily. The, the palm uh, conditioning, when we use the palm bag, the iron palm bag, Generally, traditionally speaking, we'd say 100 days, all right, uh, is how long you would use the, uh, the bag for, okay? That's just to gain the iron palm. However, then, you can use it either still daily if you wanted, or a maintenance training, okay, when you're doing the beating on the bag. However, things like this are going to keep that strength. It's like going to a gym. You're developing your strength specifically, okay, for your martial art use, but you'll gain other benefits, obviously, in, in your life through having stronger arms. So this is the next one that we looked at, okay? And that's the, the weighted uh, bar for strengthening your arms. See that theme of working the forearms and working the grip. We're gonna look at, okay, this exercise, okay? So what we're doing this is this, you've got a, a jar, okay? That just is the right size for you to grip with your fingertips this way. So I'm curling my fingers underneath. So the iron dragon claw, fingers curling back under this way. All right. So you're not grabbing it this way with the pads of the fingers. You're looking at fingertips there. And it's filled uh, with sand, just nice and simple. You can start off obviously filling it a quarter full, then a half full, and when you get really strong at it, full to the top. And then pop the lid on. You can tape the lid on if you want to do, just to make sure nothing falls out. With this, um, like I said, the Iron Dragon Claw exercise, you're, you're looking again at... Uh, at tendons, ligaments, and so on. The best way is I'll show you what to do, okay, and then you can have a go. So we're gonna use two jars, one for each hand. So to start off, get your grip on your fingertips, this way, okay, and you're lifting the jars. You're gonna start out from the side here, and you're just going to, again, elbows are, are in, not elbows out, tuck your elbows in, you're just gonna circle round, this way. And it's a simple exercise, but it's actually, hard work on the forearms, and then you change direction to the opposite way. And again, you're looking at doing this for about a minute in each direction. Do maybe 10 one way and 10 the other with the elbows tucked in. Because if your elbows are out, thinking back to the bridge hands, if your elbows are out, you're losing so much power. And when we start to look at uh, intercepting attacks, which we're gonna be looking at later on in this DVD set, you'll see with the elbows out how much power you lose if you, do, if you don't do it right. Okay, the idea is that you're gonna win this fight 
by using body mechanics. Okay, by using the correct conditioning. Because if your body mechanics are right, you will overcome the power of the attacker. Okay, because most people attack with techniques that are mechanically wrong. They'll throw a big swinging punch. Elbows are out, bodies exposed. A lot of the dim back points on the body are exposed to strike. Okay, they use bad posture. The position is not right. The foot position is not right. We're looking at getting everything right. We're looking at getting the the detail. Okay, to make this technique work. And it's not about when I say it's not about strength. You don't have to be big and muscular to make it work. Okay, look at a lot of the Chinese. Okay, uh, who practice kung fu. They've got a strong physique. However. They're not, they haven't got huge, massive muscles, all right? They're very defined. This will help you develop your body, all right? So we've done that one. Now we're going to look at the, uh, the next exercise. So you've done the circling round. Next one is just like you're going forward, just like you're pouncing forward, like a cat creeping forward. And you can do them continuous if you wish, and you can do them backwards as well, this way. Okay, and again, do 10 forward, 10 back, and repeat for about one to two minutes. You'll find that it'll really work your arms. And then from the side, arms out, circle round. Again, think of your posture and your position. Opposite way to here. And you can repeat this. You can also practice the exercise if you want to train the legs in what's called say ping mat, okay? Or four level stance. So it's like a horse stance, okay? Say ping mat. So which is feet pointing forward, knees bent. Now a full horse stance will be down here with your back straight, but I'm not gonna expect you to do that, okay? If you want to train your legs, you can go to a three quarter horse stance in this position, practicing exactly the same exercises. You can also do side lifts from here with the fingertips. So again, all the time holding with the fingertips, lifting out to the side and back. Remember your breathing, breathing out on the exertion and back, slow and controlled. Lifting out and back. Lifting forward and back. Forward and back. Left up and back. Up and down. Now, we said about doing that in the either stood up, yep, with your knees slightly bent, or in the saping mat, you can add extra stances to it. You can also go into gung ball which is sideways this way, okay, bow and arrow stance. Now from here, feet are pointing out to the angle, but your body's forward here, all right? Your back should be level with the back leg. So you're here, so you're not upright here, you're level here, so you would do the same. Is another option from here. You'd have the arms out this way, circling round, or forward, circling round, or creeping forward, by lifting to the side or lifting forward. So you could do the whole routine and then switch back to the middle, doing the same, the whole routine that I've just taught you. Then switching to the other side, doing the same again. So you would do the circle forward, creeping forward, lifting, lifting to the side. So it's building the sequence. It's up to you how you choose to train it. The stance work will help develop your legs. However, to start with, just do it in a neutral stance, feet apart, body upright. And you can bring in the horse stance or the bow stance as well. And there are other stances that you can do as well, but we're not going to look at that now. Okay, so this is the next part, the iron dragon claw, working with the fingertip for the palms. So looking at the iron palm. What I have here is a sandbag, okay? Or you could put gravel, or in these are actually beans, like I mentioned before, similar with the grab bag. Um, there's uh, peas, beans, or gravel, it's fine. This one's got three segments on it, and each one's filled slightly more. So this one's about half full, 
this one two thirds and this one full to the top so it becomes more dense now with this uh, when we do the striking okay uh, starts off with the the one that's only half full this you can make your own uh, as I mentioned before a canvas bag is really good for doing that okay you should be able to get those from uh, your stores in your in your hometown um, same as the grab bag uh, you can make them out of other things as well um, canvas is obviously a little bit stronger uh, you can buy them on the internet they, they you'll just look look up uh, iron palm bags and you should be able to find them some of them are just single and some are in segments so you can basically uh, either have one just for training or you can have them sort of graduated so you can build up so we're going to start off with the iron palm now several things you need to understand about iron palm we're going to talk about uh, the dajau uh, medicine as well all right because whenever you're doing any conditioning there's there's a, a, a likelihood that you might get some uh, minor bruising or swelling all right especially when you're starting doing the really hard uh, striking what dit dajau does is prevent that okay and dit dajau literally means fall and hit medicine and what it does is it basically, uh, uh, when you're training before or after, you put the dip that gel on your hands, okay, and then you train. And by doing that, like I say, it increases circulation, it prevents damage to yourself, okay. I have people who are acupuncturists, guitar players, and so on, who all practice the iron palm training, okay, because they train the hungar system, they train the iron arms of Shaolin, all right, and by doing the training properly, okay, and using the dip dajau, it doesn't affect their dexterity to be able to use acupuncture needles or to play guitar. Because that's always a concern for people is, you know, am I going to deform my hands by striking a bag? All right, and I've traveled to China for many, many, many years, not in the style that I teach, but in other styles, I've seen some people who they have deformed hands, all right, because they've done certain types of training. All right, and again, training specific for each individual and each individual system however the system that i'm teaching you will cause no damage to you all right it will make sure that there's no no problem so you can train it safely and if you follow the training program that i'm teaching it will enable you to uh, to develop your iron palm okay to develop the iron, iron arms of shaolin and cause like i say little or no bruising or swelling to your hands at all if you train correctly so we're going to start off in a second going on to that training. Okay, so I've mentioned about Dit Dajau. This is uh, a bottle of Dit Dajau, what like I say means fall and hit medicine. Uh, within this uh, uh, package, the Marshall Militia DVD set, you'll get the recipe uh, either on the DVD or the download uh, for the Dit Dajau so you know how to make it. Not going to go into detail on how to make it, uh, as in, in this DVD set, however, it is very, very easy to make. Basically, the herbs that you'll get from the recipe, which will go to uh, a Chinese herbalist or order online, you get those herbs. You can grind them up, okay, uh, which helps to uh, uh, release some of the potency of the, of the herbs themselves. Um, or you can actually just use them in their entirety if you wish. Um, sometimes if you use it in its entirety just as a raw herb without grinding it up, it takes just a little bit longer to, to, to develop. Dit Dajau basically takes around about four to six months to, uh, to form. You would get the herbs, place it in a container, uh, preferably uh, a glass container. All right. uh, however, you can use uh, plastic containers as long as it's, um, you know, it, it's compatible with, how should I say, we're putting sort of chemicals in and things like that, because some, some plastics have things in, don't they, that, you know, so that you, you can't put certain things in. Um, what, uh, what we sometimes use, uh, if you think, think things like a uh, screen wash for your car, all right, if you've got one of those sort of five litre bottles of screen wash, okay, once you finish with it, give it a really good clean out and you can use that for the dip that gel. So they're really useful. Or like a demijohn that you use for wine making is also useful as well. What you do, you get the herbs, you place them in the bottle, either ground or not ground, okay, and then you pour four litres of alcohol in. Uh, alcohol usually at least 37%, so vodka is fine. Doesn't need to be an expensive vodka, just a cheap vodka or a cheap whiskey is fine. Once you've done that, you put the lid on and you leave it for four to six months, preferably six months. After six months, you can siphon off the liquid and you have the dit dajau. So the liquid itself has taken on the potency of the herbs 
okay, which take away inflammation, take away swelling, bruising, and so on. Really good for sport injuries as well. But anyway, like I say, you're going to get the list of the herbs, so you'll be able to see that, all right? And I'm going to go on to the actual training aspect now. So ideally, using dip gel before and afterwards. You get just a little bit in your palm and rub it into your hands, both sides. Okay, really work it into the fingers. Both hands. Back of the hand. And so on and so forth. Okay. Once you've done that, you can also place the lid back on the dip da jiao, and then you can start the iron palm training. And you repeat the process once you've done the training as well. All right, it's really important. We'll talk about if you get any sort of lumps and bumps from your general training of this Hungar system, all right, from the martial militia uh, uh, art. If you do, you can use the dip da jiao to massage and work that area to try and get away that stagnation and that swelling. All right, but generally speaking, if you train properly, okay, you shouldn't get uh, a great deal of problems, if any at all. All right. Okay. So let's look at the iron palm training aspect. I'm going to start with the palm. So feet apart, knees slightly bent. So in that saping ma. Okay. And what you're doing is you're not hitting with physical force. You're allowing gravity to do the work. So. With gravity, what I mean is you're allowing the hand to drop the weight of the hand. So to start with, okay, from here, hand comes up, relax, and let the hand drop down, okay? So you're going to sink your body slightly as well to help facilitate that. So down here. Same with the other. Down. Up. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two. One. Two, one, two, one, two. Elbows in. One, two, one, two. Now, that's obviously just training the palm. But what we want to do is train the back of the hand as well. So we can combine that in a continuous movement. So it'll be one, the turnover, two. One, turnover, two. So we'll do it this way again. Knees bent in the same thing, the four level stance. So it's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, hit, down, hit, down, one, two, one, two. Keep it going. And you're looking at doing around about 100 repetitions. Yes, it will sting a little bit, okay? Depending on what you put in, I would suggest you start with beans or dried peas, something like that. In here are mung beans, which you can get from either online or supermarkets will, will sell those, but they're just dried beans, okay? Now, when you do this, like I say, is that relax? Remember your breathing here. Allow your breathing to be natural. Once you've worked the palm and the back of the hand, we've then got to look at training other aspects because we strike with fingers, we strike with the edge of the hand, we strike with the outer edge of the hand, right, we strike with the wrists and the fists. So we've got to look at developing that. So let's have a look at the edge of the hand. Now for this one, as you sink the hand, we're still using gravity to do it, but as you sink the hand, you tilt the hand down this way, down, down this way, okay? So you would drop here into the pad. You see the hand? I'm not flicking my fingers up. I'm sinking my wrist down. So it's really important. So I'm going down to here. So from here, down, down. And we'll do this as repeating one hand, down. And you can work your way from gradually as you do better. You can work up to the more dense aspects. So again, from here, in, in. That's still that tilt of the wrist. Down, down. Then other, down, down. Sinking the body. 
You can either repeat on the same hand or you can alternate. Again, around about 100 repetitions. Then from there, we're then going to look at uh, the fingers we'll do with some be other beans training that I'll show you afterwards. Now we're going to work out on the punch. So from here, you may need to adjust the height of your table depending, but this is just about right for me to be able to hit down. Different punching methods that we'll be using, all right? But to start with, we're just going to use the sun fist. The reason it's called the sun fist is because the shape of it and the lines with the fingers looks like the Chinese character for sun, hence it's called sun fist. Okay, so if you need to bring the bag closer to you so it's toward the edge of the table, so you don't hit your, your hand on the table, from here, and you're just going to, I'm not punching with force, I'm not delivering punches this way, okay, it's bad structure, I'm just going to keep my elbows tucked in, and I'm going to deliver the punch down, so from here, say ping ma, four level horse stance, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And it's nice and simple. I'm not punching with the fingers, I'm punching with the knuckles. Really important. Some people, some martial arts will say, for example, Wing Chun hits with the bottom three here. Okay? Some other martial arts styles hit with the top two. I'm not overly concerned with which part of the hand you're hitting on the bag. The reason being, in a fight situation, what's going to happen? A dynamic situation. Are you going to be able to hit perfectly with three knuckles or two knuckles? Is it, or even if you got hit with the fingers, which you don't want to be doing, obviously. But in a dynamic situation, is it real life? Yeah. Are things unpredictable? Do people move? Of course they do. So you can't guarantee you're going to hit them with pinpoint accuracy with a certain area of your fist. So train the whole fist. You're training everything. So again, from here, one, two, one, two. Notice the elbows tucked in. Now, I'm not talking about punching mechanics. What I'm just talking about is training the iron palm on the bag. That's what we're looking at. Okay. So, that's the punch. Now, we also have the hammer fist, the bottom of the hand. So, for here, same idea. Dropping the hammer down. One. Bottom edge of the fist. There's no tilt as such on this one, other than the fact, so I'm not dropping here, all right? I'm actually just training the whole edge of the hand. Here, hitting in. Because you're trying to, I suppose to a certain extent, desensitize the hands. Because when you hit something, if you hit a solid surface, you, what, you, what you don't want to do is it hurt you, all right? You want to have your hands so strong and your arms so strong that when you hit something, it destroys what you hit. All right. The last thing you want to do is hit somebody and suddenly be leaping around because you've hurt your hand. By training the iron palm correctly, okay, that won't happen. All right. So, so far we've done the palm, the back of the hand. Okay. We've done the punching. We've done the hammer fist. There are other areas you can strike with as well. Like I say, you can strike with the inside edge of the hand. Slightly harder to train on the bag, but we're also going to be using beans to train as well. You can also strike with the fingertips. You can strike with the Phoenix Eye Fist. Now, the Phoenix Eye Fist, from here, okay, you, from here, you will curl the bottom three knuckles over. Curl the thumb in. Start to make a fist, just like you're pointing the finger. And then you'll curl your index finger in and squeeze it down. So it's this shape here. So the index finger is braced against the thumb there. So the thumb's not on top this way, it's here, pressed in, and this one squeezes down here. So you're striking with a focused strike. Designed for striking things like your dim mat points, which we're going to look at later on, okay? And it's really good for getting into small, narrow gaps. So again, one more time, curl the fingers in, thumb comes down, squeeze in, and then make the tight fist. 
and that will give you a really good strike. You can be striking forward this way, you can strike this way, you can strike round. There's lots of different ways of striking with the Phoenix Eye Fist. So, on the bag from here, you will get to residual contact with the other knuckles just because of the, of the, the sort of looseness in the bag. However, the index finger knuckle is what you're going for. Start off light, but you should feel the main emphasis saping mat on the index finger knuckle, looking at penetrating through the bag with that Phoenix eye fist. Relax, breathe when you hit. Okay, and that will help to strengthen and develop that so you can strike with it. Because again, at first that's probably a bit more refined to strike with. It takes a little bit more practice just because you've got to train it not to collapse. However, you're not going to be looking at hitting bony surfaces with this. You're looking at going into the finer points, all right? Okay, so when we use some of the uh, uh, different bridge hand concepts, okay, so you can strike, for example, then follow through with a second strike. So you might, you might hit them once and then follow through with a second, secondary strike using the Phoenix Eye Fist or Fingers. There's loads and loads of different options. So, like you say, you can train all these different aspects. Once you've got that, okay, you're then going to work on to, uh, going onto the fingertips, which we can't do effectively on this bag. So we're going to look at going to training with a tub full of beans, and I'll explain that when we move on to it. So that's giving you a good starting point for training the iron palm. You can develop that and go a lot further with it as well. However, obviously, I'm giving you what's sufficient for you to be able to train your iron palm to make it work with the training that you're doing in this DVD set. So we'll move on to training the fingertips. Okay, so now we're looking at using the a tub full of beans, and I'll talk about that in a short while, while training the beauty, the spear hand. And this is the fingertip strike. Now, when you form a spear hand, really important, all right, the thumb is curled over and in the middle. Don't have your thumb stuck out on the outside. Okay, because when we use that for the actual martial application, it's very easy for something to catch your thumb there and it'll break your thumb. You need to tuck it in the middle to protect so that it's flat this way, so that there's nothing protruding. It tucks into the center. This is flat here. So we're striking with the fingertips themselves. Now, the tub of beans. This uh, tub of beans here, okay, is a mixture of uh, red beans, okay, is a mixture of mung beans, okay. Um, there's several different types of, of, of bean in there. Basically, you can start off with mung beans or red beans, uh, or a combination of which, 50% 50, 50 of each one. You can develop the training to go on to uh, uh, different types of things. So you can put sort of bits of sand in there. Uh, there's loads of different things. What you need to do, make sure when you're practicing though, try not to have your nails too long because you don't want to get the beans stuck behind your nail because that will hurt. Like I said, the beans themselves from here. Yeah, you've got various different sizes of the beans. I don't know if you can see from there. All right, we'll get a close up at shortly so you can see. All right, but from here, it's basically uh, a mixture of sizes of beans so that when you strike, all right, uh, you've got different densities to go through. What you're looking at doing is striking. First of all, we're just going to do thrusting fingers or beauty, okay, into the tub in the saping mat to start with. There's, and then I'm going to show you some of the ways. So from here, and the idea being that you're going to thrust your fingers in and get them going as deep into the bin as you can, okay? So, in, in. In, in, down, down. Keeping your thumb tucked in. And by doing this, you might get the beans stuck to your hand, but that's fine. By doing this, you're training the fingertips, amongst other things. But now what we're going to do is we need to add the grip to it as well. So you're going to strike into the bean, this way. I'll just show you sideways. Strike in. Forward, back, twist, twist, grip, out. Yeah? So it's one, forward, back, twist, twist, grip, out. It's the same principle. In, forward, back, twist, twist, grip, out. Down, forward, 
back, twist, twist, grip, out, down, forward, back, twist, twist, grip, out, down, forward, back, twist, twist, grip, out. And you're trying to get as far down that tub as you can. So try and get your hand to the bottom of the tub. Okay, so it's way past your elbow here. So if you were to look at my elbow's level with the top of the tub there, so my arm is quite a way down in that tub, as you can see from the side. So here, forward, back, twist, twist, grip, out, down, forward, back, twist, twist, grip, out. And by doing this, like you say, you want to be practicing about 100 repetitions. And 100 repetitions on each exercise will give you really, really good iron palm skill. What you'll find with doing this with the beans is the beans will um, obviously stimulate the nerves on your fingers. So you might find your fingers tingle a little bit, but that's fine. Okay, you shouldn't fight, feel any major discomfort. But when you do the technique, if you feel any discomfort on any of the techniques, you need to stop, okay, and reduce the number of times you do it. But the beans are really good. Uh, we'll do a close-up of the beans so you can see. Uh, very, very easy, very effective, and uh, it'll give you very strong fingers. Another important aspect with the beans, uh, because it's a natural thing, it's a natural product, you've got the natural oils that are in the beans themselves, so they will help to uh, protect your skin, all right? So there's, there's natural benefits from the beans themselves. Like I said, this is just uh, a bin that you get from any supermarket, and fill it pretty much to about here, all right, uh, with the beans. Again, you can get them in, you know, sort of kilo bags, and it'll cost a little bit just to get them set up, all right? But it's really, really fantastic, is this for training your beauty? Because when you strike the fingers, yeah, you'll have very, very strong fingertips to do it. Because like you say, what you don't want to do is hit something and the fingers collapse. When you strike with this, it'll keep those, those fingers strong. Training to keep the, el the elbows in, thumb tucked in, so that that's protected as well, all right? Okay, so that's the training with the beans. We'll move on.